Sydney's number one podcast, West Underground. Welcome to another episode of West Welcome Underground. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today we are joined by none other than Yasmina. She's here with us. Hello. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, I'm well. How is everybody? Very well. Can you just come in a little bit closer? Uh, here? Yeah. Yeah. That'll do. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Yasmina's in. It's a very hot day here in Sydney and we are dressed like crayons. Yeah, hey, we're, also not, wearing, not me, no. <laughs> we're we also are. all wearing long, uh, like yeah, long pants. It's so warm. Yeah, I'm. I'm not used to this. Yeah. I'm not used to this shit. So you can swear if you want. Uh, you can swear. Yeah. I am used to this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Too used to it. I'm not. I like. I lived here my whole life, but like in, but this year, like because we had cave, so much, so much, cave. so much like rain this year. It's felt yeah. like we've just had like winter for like three seasons, and now we're getting hit by the heat. And it's like, what? What is happening? Like. <laughs> well, I just started watching Game of Thrones. Oh, nice! Yeah. And winter have, is coming. Yeah, they yeah. have long winters. Yeah, yeah. It fucks shit up for them. It's so <laughs> weird. I seen um, I seen a picture of my home yesterday, and it's covered in snow. Yeah, and Wait, I was where like, exactly is your home? Liverpool. Oh, okay. What so? What's happening with <laughs> Liverpool? Like, I, is Mina grew up in Exeter? Yeah, and I was trying to see if she had any. Hatred towards Liverpool there. No, I couldn't no, see I couldn't no. see it on her face. Um <laughs> Yeah. It's like it looks beautiful though on the snow. Yeah. I can't get used to the Christmas being a hot day over here. You don't like the it's Christmas weird. barbecue? No, it's weird. Don't like Christmas in the pool? You're supposed to be cold and eat too much food. Oh, we still do that. Yeah. We have yeah. a big like Italian lunch. Yeah. We usually cook like a lasagna. We make like macaroni. We like hen rolling. Oh, it's wow. a big ordeal. Yeah, but the difference is you've got your Italian background, right? So you've got mm. amazing chefs, right? Family recipes that have been passed on. Yeah. We have like <laughs> turkey with something Prawn. shoved up its arse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Sometimes we have something with something up its arse. What is it? Usually like a turkey. Oh, okay. We'll go buy something. <laughs> like, thank, we'll be like, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are the Australian people doing on Christmas? That's like pretend. Well, they, what are they having? You, you, do you do a barbecue every Christmas? Yeah, and like seafood and have like huge seafood. Oh, oh yeah, seafood. Yeah, weird. Yeah, so for sure. much. Um, yeah. It's weird. I can't get used to it. You know when, you know when, oh, I see Christmas decorations yeah. up on outside a house now. I think... It's like they've left them up all year round, yeah. and it's in the summer months. I still can't distinguish the fact that that's y- like my house. Have, yeah, like once do, do you just leave them yeah. up? Oh, well, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> like, like I live on a street. My auntie lives next door to me, yeah. and my nonna and my nonno they live like on like essentially like on the other side of my house. Mm. And like we are so used to like people doing things for other people. So like when things are left like you know undone like i'm like ah oh, somebody's yeah. going to come in yeah. eventually and mm. do this thing that is undone because there is like an army of us yeah and you know my auntie's like she'll do the laundry my nonna and my nonno they do like the cooking and then you know me and my brothers we kind of do the sleeping yeah the eating <laughs> <laughs> and um i like the idea that People are gonna know where you live now by decorations still being up outside yeah, the house yeah if it's like if it's <laughs> March and you see Halloween decorations. It's my house. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's good. There's a few houses like that, like around Sydney. Yeah, uh, it's uh, always Halloween. It's always yeah. Halloween. No, we had like this witch pinata from last Halloween, mm. and it was this Halloween. And I'm like, oh my god, like this bitch is still here. <laughs> and my auntie was like, no, it's good for the Malocchio. You know, like it's good to like wear off the devil. I'm like, it's a pinata. <laughs> so nobody <laughs> smashed the pinata yet. No. Hang on. So. <laughs> So, so you've had a piñata uh, yeah. at the front of your house, and no, 
<laughs> and it's still there. Like yeah. nobody's stolen Oz, it. Nobody's Oz, Oz post having fucked up with it. I think it's now gone. Yeah, because we were like, this is getting out of hand. Yeah. yeah, but it was there for a year, and she she was there through the rain. What? Everything she was on her broomstick. I'm thinking you maybe caused the storms <laughs> by leaving that witch up. <laughs> yeah, we got some. We got some juju, you know, in our pockets. Yeah, I think I think that's what it was. Air fault. <laughs> Air fault. All the bad weather. Blame yeah. It on my family. Is there? Do you do Christmas decorations? I we haven't this year. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I'm like, I'm not putting a fucking tree up. I can't. Oh, you're not even having a tree. No. You're a real Grinch. I'm not a Grinch. I, when I have kids, I'll be like all for Christmas. You know yeah. what I mean? I've watched the Christmas films. I've started getting into that. Yeah. But I'm not. F- you're not putting up a tree. What about this makes you think he puts a tree up? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. You know? No. Christmas is in the soul. Mm. Yeah, I, that's what I always say. We do Jesus wouldn't want the tree. He'd want me to drink Baileys on a Wednesday afternoon. That's what he'd want. <laughs> so we did Christmas decorations here one year, two years ago, and yeah. we had them up till the next year. Yeah. <laughs> And and, and, and now they're all they're all in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it looks good though. It does look good. What's um Yasmina This has started so off topic, hasn't it, really? Yeah. We did Christmas. It's Christmas soon. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. Yasmina, so, tell us a little bit about your beginnings into music. Um, okay, I guess I start well I've always like really been interested in singing and music and writing songs. Uh, mm. Not even necessarily writing songs, but like writing creative stories and um, like poetry and things like that ever since I was a little, like a little girl, I suppose. Um, and then I think it was about maybe like year nine or something, I started posting, like I just downloaded like R&B type beat, mm. like lo-fi type beat, and I downloaded like a free beat and then... I like what was it? Uh, Meet me by the ocean. I think that was the first one I po- I posted on SoundCloud. Um, SoundCloud. Yeah, SoundCloud. Yeah. I oh. love SoundCloud. I think it's amazing. Are you, is your stuff still up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's still up there. I um, had I had to listen to like some stuff I put on there when I was in like year nine yeah. on Saturday, and I was like, <laughs> sickening to hear listen to. No, it. There's one song journey. where I sing like Neil Diamond on it, and I was like, <laughs> what? Where, where, where's where, where's the Neil Diamond coming from? You know, I didn't have Neil Diamond in my blood, <laughs> but I sounded like Neil Diamond on that. Maybe can you can you listen to those those like older songs? Still today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You're very brave. Can you listen to them yeah. with other people around? Uh maybe my old. Let's do it right now, Hugh. SoundCloud. No. No. I can see the fear on your face. <laughs> uh, I suppose what I was... Because uh, uh, I find I can listen to, like, all of all of my, like, uh, like early, um, like, recordings, but I can't listen to them with others around. Mm. I mean, like, even uh, now, like, when people play my music, it's like, oh, like, hey, guys. Because like, I feel like it's such a personal thing. Like, when you're writing and you're recording your music... Yeah. It's like essentially it's by myself, yeah. De- and then like all of a sudden like I'm in a room and like I'm like watching people's reactions and <laughs> most of the time it's just my friends and they're like taking the piss and they're like, Haha, like, are you like trying to be a musician or something? <laughs> oh. um, but it's like it's funny. Do you have any family like friends that try to like that are, that are that they they want to support you by being like, oh, th- this is my you know, um, that's like, my that is my family. That's like my yeah. aunties. Um, and my mother has passed away, but when she was alive, that was her. And I remember this one time we went to an RSL and just for dinner and they were doing like a singing competition (laughs) and my mom was like, you're going into the singing singing Mm. competition. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like you're going to get in it. And I was like wearing like half school clothes, half like uh, like pajamas pretty much. And I, and like all these people had like prepared and, like had a band and I just had like my laptop with me just by chance that day and I went into the sing competition and I fucking won it. Smashed it. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah, I won. <laughs> Smashed it. People prepared their entire lives for that. She turns up in half a uniform. 
I know it was it, actually you know it was with good the oak, that she put with me the oak, in it. with yeah. the oak slippers on exactly that, like that's literally amazing. yeah I'm from te. but I'm glad she she forced me into it because I was like oh my god like I actually can like do this like you know it's, do you ever sing in a choir oh I used to sing choirs I used to like I used to do music programs as well TDP TAP yeah um shout out Canberra Bankstown area yeah. that was my favorite I think um did you do the Vegas trip. The Vegas trip? No, no, that was. What's the Vegas trip? I I think once they went to Vegas one year. Is that what you're? Oh um, yeah, like the I think does the tap program does the tap program do the do the Vegas trip? Well, I think it depends. Like year, like it differs year to year. Like we'll do different things. As there are a couple of years, um, we did like we did like the Easter show, Martin Place. We did stuff like that. Mm. Um. And they were amazing. Like, the women there were so supportive and, like, really knew their shit. Yeah. Like, I think, like, I owe my musical journey to, like, all of my teachers and all the people who really were really, really good at, like, performing and knowing, like, how to teach, like, really relevant performance skills to people. Um, I think that's, like, one of the things that makes me, like, a really cool artist. Like, I do... Yeah know my performance and mm. i owe it to my teachers because they were really really um supportive and really like they knew it they were passionate about it yeah, so. that's yeah. i'm always jealous when we get people in who've had like a supportive actual like can I just education into music yeah can i just give a bit of a clarification here like i just want to say that for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about here the tap is like a talent um program for like children in this area mm. and um they, there's like a trip they do every couple of years where they like the kids they get to go over to las vegas and open up for human nature yeah in because that's one of the directors yeah yeah like one of the directors human nature is like her babies yeah oh, okay yeah literally yeah she's the mum. yeah she's the mum of it they came from how old are these kids going to vegas oh like in their in their teens like year probably 10 11 12. nepotism that's, that's a Awesome trip to go yeah, on right. that, isn't it? Right? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, that's an awesome trip. Yeah. Honestly, like maybe this is, maybe people are going to not like this, but I feel like TAP taught me more than TDP did. TDP is like a national wide yeah. program mm. um, and it's a lot harder to get into, but TAP taught me like more, honestly, in my opinion. Like, TDP, like, they had, like, cool stuff and they had cool people coming in, but TAP, like, taught us, like, the real shit. Like, this is how you walk onto a stage and, and, and like, how you hold yourself, like, in a room before the performance starts and all these things that you wouldn't even be thinking mm. about. But it actually is really important because once you learn everything and, like, you know, you're really, like, getting into, like, the nitty-gritty stuff, it's easier to, you know, take what you need and pull that out and then bring that onto stage with you, I think. It's, it is fascinating. It's fascinating to me because as you're talking there, right, I'm thinking, like, I've been gigging for 10 years, right? Mm. And I'm thinking, do I not know this stuff? Maybe you don't. <laughs> Maybe I don't. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I'm just DIY, innit? it? Yeah, but, you know, but that's the thing. It's like that, like, just experience mm. and just doing performances, like, that is how you're going to learn how to become a musician. Mm. Yeah. Like, you can spend all this time at home writing songs and doing all that stuff, and that's great. And, you know, like, obviously, like, you learn lessons, you know, like, mm. in that as well. But I feel like actually going out there and doing it by yourself, meeting the people, meeting the horrible and the amazing people, mm. like, that is how you learn how to be a musician. It's like, a bit like swimming in the sense that you can't stay it home. It is a bit like swimming. You can't stay home and read books on it. Like, mm. you can't read books on how to learn how to swim. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've just got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yeah. And the deep water is out there. The deep water is out there. Mm. Yeah, it's it's just, I, I as you're, like, I was getting anxious as you were talking then. And I was thinking, I wonder how much I don't know. <laughs> mm. I, wonder, I, wonder, I wonder what's missing. Mm. Yeah, I, that pause from Hamish makes me think he's going to say, I'll tell you after. <laughs> It'll all come out. No, but I just want to know what, what, like, how are you supposed to hold yourself when you go up there? Gracefully. 
Yeah, with, spo- with grace and poise. Um, <laughs> yeah, they would teach us. Oh, things I do that. Like, well, yeah, they would teach us things <laughs> like you know before you're on stage, like before like you're about to enter the stage, yeah. like the eyes are already on you. Like you have to be ready. You can't be fucking around. You have to be ready as if you're ready to go on stage before you are on stage. Mm. Um, things like that, like the way you walk onto a stage and things like that. But it, but I feel like they were. Also Did you have like, seminars where you were just walking? Yes, you just exactly. again, again, Yasmina, yes, again. They would do stuff like that, yeah. but it was good. Like that's the stuff that actually does help you. Yeah, you get home and you're like, oh, bloody knackered. <laughs> 150 times, <laughs> maybe walk on and off that stage. So, to like, yeah. is is there a particular way to stroll on like Sinatra? <laughs> well, you gotta find. But well, that's the thing as well. Like, you need to find your own unique step and flow mm. everybody's gonna walk on the stage differently i heard ringo talking about this the other day he said he said i still get fucking nervous when before i play and he goes i run to the mic and then they cut the, the, the little clip i watched on youtube had it cut to like one of um ringo's gigs mm. and he's just he's runs <laughs> off side, he's just running to the mic that's a good way to get the, the crowd out yeah, yeah 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 watching an 84 year old man <laughs> jogging at least he can. I'd like to be in that position when I'm 84. I would like to watch. It'd be good to watch performance that minute before a show. Yeah. Just just to see. And I think every, everyone goes through that, like, the nerves. Everyone has that. You, I think whenever you, you're you completely confident and you're like, oh, I'm going to smash this, that's when shit goes wrong in a hurry. When you, I think it's good to be nervous. Mm. Being nervous means you still care about it. No, I don't believe that. Yeah. No? no, you're so confident, Yasmina. <laughs> yeah. But it's like it's like because she's trained and I'm not. <laughs> no, but don't you? I I see where I see where you're coming from because the best gigs I've ever had are the ones where I'm not thinking in. Mm. Do you know what? I, like I'm not I'm not I'm not sitting on my own shoulders, being like, you know, like making myself anxious. Yeah. And adding to the pressure. I don't yeah. mean like shaking and shitting yourself before that. I just mean like the I nerves. Th- it's good. To, it's good to have jitters. I mean, it's not good or bad. It's just like sometimes it's just a part of it. I think <laughs> maybe I'm just an anxious person. Yeah. This is what we'll learn. Yeah, maybe you're just projecting. Yeah, oh, it's good to be nervous. <laughs> I'm projecting. I'm projecting so much right now. <laughs> be nervous. <laughs> Are you feeling nervous? Because I am. Yeah. I'm yeah. projected, sorry. No. <laughs> Can't help it. Can't help it. I'm nervous right now. <laughs> right um, now. You didn't look very nervous when I when it, um yeah, I that's came right. to where, you. Where I came you to your, your, sh- I came you to see your see show. You? Yeah. 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 You know what? That's really funny because I think in the last couple of months, that was like one of the worst performances that we've done for like my original set and it wasn't like like the band is like fucking insane like my musicians are always amazing yeah okay. shout out to my musicians who was that uh luke nick river me molly we all slay um <laughs> but yeah that one we just we were all really fucked and we didn't all get into the rehearsals at the same yeah. time and it makes a big difference mm. when you're not in the same rehearsal. We did a rehearsal the other day and it was all of us and it was so pleasant. And I was mm. like, wow, the beauty of all being in the, <laughs> all of us being in the same room and rehearsing at the same time. Um, but yeah, there were like a couple of things that actually really went wrong in that set. But yeah, like I, it was just so much fun that I couldn't even be nervous. Yeah, I was like, things were happening and like things were kind of like unraveling a little bit, but I was just so like enthralled and like it was such a weird experience because i haven't really found that like usually stuff like that like well in the past like things like that have thrown me off but i don't know why i was just uber chill and like happy to Mm. be there and it was so much fun anyway and then we did that um wicked games cover at the end i love that song yeah i watched that i love love that song Mm, yeah so it was just so much fun (laughs) but yeah that for me was um actually not my favorite at all well you kind of had you you had the odds stacked against you in a way because the sound was like shit the whole night like the essentially team. in a factory yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. like the sound this like was it was just was just struggling in that mm. in that venue and then mm. it, it was but i when i watched you I, and you guys i thought like this this is these guys are good but this is like 
the wrong place. Like wrong for it. Yeah, because it was kind of it was kind of it was kind of like the two polar polar you know what polar it, energies. Well, you know what? It's so funny you say that. People tend to say that about my music all the time. They always say like, "This isn't the right place for your music." What is the right place for New yeah. Soul though? Yeah. Like it, it is just what it is. Like we are just making the sounds like, like essentially just come through us. Like there's no right or wrong place for it in my opinion. Cause you know, I love those like factory gigs or like, yeah. like we did a gig at Barber's place and we were like sitting up like on the tables, like all that stuff. I'm so here for it. I feel like it just, like everybody just becomes so relaxed and it's, mm, yeah. and it's cool and it's fun. But I feel like, Myth of Her, shout out to Myth of Her, they slay, by the way. Amazing, amazing. Um, We've and got that, an and that interview. performance, I was like, oh my God, thank you guys. I was like that. I was like, what the fuck? This is so good. Um, We've got an interview with Myth of Her coming out soon. Plug. And it was one of the wildest interviews. Oh, yeah? We don't really allow drinking in here because, you know, things get out of hand in a hurry. And, yeah, and I did. And within 10 minutes, I was like, I don't know if we can release this interview. <laughs> and we're, we're just, we're still we're weighing up whether we do. Because <laughs> so it could awesome. be career suicide. Because, uh, or it could, it could be, yeah. No, it could maybe be, you just maybe on Patreon. Things. Maybe on Patreon. Yeah. You're on that. So Joel and um, Joel and Tyler came and they brought us, they brought a case, like a case of beer. Oh, yeah. But the case was already half empty when they got here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I could smell some other funny stuff as well. What the hell? Why didn't I get invited? <laughs> yeah, oh, it was it was yeah, it was good, but yeah. it was so fun. It got to the point where we we're like, "Got to do this podcast," you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll yeah. see on that one. Yeah, could be it could be could be the end of West Underground. No, 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 no. No, it's good. It's People good. gotta it's good. have thicker skin. Like yeah. Um, how did how did you go about getting on that show? Do you, do you know them? Do oh, you know them yeah, better? yeah. I know some of those boys. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, I think that, like, the like I don't, in my opinion, I feel like their music and my music is still, like, kind of on the same spectrum. Still music. Because it's still very, like, <laughs> has, like, that undercurrent of, like, bluesy and, like, deep feeling. and mm. like, You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just, like, two kind of versions of it, I think. I think a lineup is fine. As long as it's good artists, good yeah. good acts, you know what I mean. Yeah. And I don't think it really matters. I mean, music so festivals, much. like like it, as long as they're good. It's when there's a there's a disparity I in quality, so too. and then yeah. you go, mm. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. something cannot be your cup of tea, but you go, oh, they're good. I get, I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I I never I never think you should worry too much about that when you put a lineup for a show. Mm. I mean, don't have a heavy metal screamo band. And then the Wiggles. <laughs> it's not going to work. Yeah. I'd, I'd pay I, money for that. Actually, yeah, actually, just, as I said it. <laughs> you're like, wait a there's, second. There's, there's a business there's opportunity there. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish that the myth of her started with their string songs, like at the end of you, at the end of yours. And then went that way. Cause when they came on and you, cause you finished with wicked game. Mm. Right. And like, I was I was like, oh, this is cool. Like I hadn't mm. left the house that day. Like we'd just been doing, you know, catching up on other work and all kinds of stuff. And um, I came out and I was like, oh, this is this is this is like mm. like I'm having a, I'm having a good time. And then Myth of Her came on and it was just like, <sighs> and um and then and then they kind of like chilled out for a mm. little bit. But it was like the disparity of the energy. I was like, man, this is this is wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so interesting how like like a set can really change the mood of the audience. And like, yeah. That's why it's so, it's so interesting. Like, like depending on like where you place your songs, like you could lose or like capture, not saying that Myth of Her lost anybody. They definitely did not. We, everybody was like, what the fuck? I um, went even there and even I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. They slay. Um, but yeah, no, it's so interesting how like a set can do that to an audience. Do you change things on the fly? Uh, what do you... Oh, are you okay? Did you hit something? Producer Hughes just had He's a fall. You know, we should start telling lies about him. I think we should just have a Hugh cam. No. No, because like, cause you can't see him, but I can just start making lies up. Is he reading Hitler's Mein Kampf? <laughs> <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> 
Oh, Kanye, sorry. Yeah, yeah do, you, isn't, guys. do you do you change do you change your set round on the fly? Um, Depending on like how a show's going. What do you mean on the fly? Like, do you mean like? Don't play this one next. These aren't gonna enjoy that. Oh no 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 no. We usually stick to it. You and sometimes I know I'm like they're not gonna get this, mm. but we just do it anyway because. Yeah. They don't need to go. I sold them. It's three minutes. There'll be another song after it. <laughs> there was actually this one gig. Shout out to Vex. We love Vex. Um, and it was the first time I ever met these boys. I've now become like really, really good friends with these guys. Mm. Uh, they're like, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to call. I don't want to put them in a genre because I know they're gonna be like, don't, don't put us in a box. But um, it's kind of like punky. I would say kind of like gritty, punky, very cool. Um, and they just by chance were like, hey, like. Like, we like what you do, uh, want to come do this gig with us, um, like, support us. And I was like, I, like, we weren't really getting paid a lot for it because obviously it was, like, split by tickets and stuff. Mm. Um, but I didn't really care because I really liked their vibe and I liked their vision and I really respected that. And I was like, you know what, I just want to do this because I respect, like, their artistry and I just want to do it. Mm. But we did the gig and there were problems with sound, but you know, sometimes that just happens. But it was like the crowd was very like, ooh, this is not what you're we expecting. Mm. Um, and it was interesting. It was like mostly male. <laughs> it was just mostly a bunch of like dudes and I was singing my little uh, bla- Black t shirts, leather jacket dudes. Yeah, or- fucking lost cost hats and shit, which is oh, cool, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, they were they were very like, oh, this is this is cool, and we did a cover of a Radiohead song because I really love Radiohead, and we did um, oh, what's the one? The one in Romeo and Juliet. Uh, uh Karma, please. Uh, huh? Is it no, c- no, the one in Ju- Romeo and Juliet. I want you, boom, boom, and uh, what the fuck's it called? Oh, true. No. Jack, you're up. I don't know. The one, anyway, we did a Radiohead song. Hold on, Hugh. Can you Google that, please? Radiohead song in Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, we did that song, and then and then some people came out to me like, oh, like I really like that Radiohead song. and Talk show host. Yeah, that's the one. Thanks, you. Get back to my encamp. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, and that was an interesting gig. So sometimes, like... So it's funny because I feel like it's some people will pick us to do, you know, like certain gigs, and often, some well, often it usually does fit the vibe. I don't know. I feel like I feel like my kind of music it's versatile, mm. in my opinion. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, but it's still good fun. I'm I'm having a bit of a crisis of identity with that at the minute. Is like the the stuff my band shot at the Grand Union. Always always love you. Um, the stuff we're writing now is not what we have st- done or sounded like for the last mm. two years, and I'm like, so with Frankie's closing, um, yeah. it, like th- obviously that that puts a hole in the music scene here anyway. Mm. But I'm this new stuff. I'm kind of thinking, where are we, where are we going to play this? Because I don't think you could play it in the Duke, and I don't think you play it. In these venues, I, don't, I don't think. It, I don't think. Yeah, it there's fits. there's not a sign up at the door that says if no you play, bloody no bloody English music. Yeah. That's how I'm describing it. No, yeah. I, I think I think I think musicians do what they need to do, and venues should, mm. you know, actually uh, adjust to fit like the diverse music that Sydney has. Because yeah. when you go at like literally anywhere else in the world. Especially Melbourne, like on Melbourne, there's yep. like a whole street, and like that is like a venue, uh, like literally door to door venue. That's like so much work for musicians, mm. and I feel like, especially like venues in Melbourne, they make it like very like, ooh, like vintage couches, and yeah, yeah, board <laughs> games. Come have a have have a gab. I w- um, uh, let's pretend it's 1995. There's yeah. no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Let's just it. talk to each other. Fuck off. Can I ask, like, where does you you know the with the does is there a neo soul kind of like scene in Sydney? Like, is there? A I think definitely there are people doing neo soul constantly. Um, especially, I feel like neo soul. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, I I don't know. 
Um, like, are you on your? Are you out there on your own, or do you know of any other people that no. are kind of doing in the in the same space? I know like lots of like. J- I, I also do like lots of improvised, yeah. alternative jazz. I don't even know what to call it. It's it's improvised music, so we just make it up on the spot. It's like oh, alternative cool. jazz neo yeah, soul. I do cool. lots of freestyle. Yeah. Um. So for that kind of stuff, like more like jazz stuff, there is definitely so many mm. spaces for that. Um, f- like there are people who definitely do neo soul in Sydney. Like there are heaps of people who do it. I don't know if there's like I'd say like one venue where where you constantly see neo soul and mm. like R and B artists coming through per se. But like there is that there, there are people doing it. Yeah. Um, but like but a community is. Yeah, I. Uh, like, like. I don't. I don't. For musicians, I find, like, I know lots of, like, musicians and producers. Like, I have, like, a really large pool of, like, musicians and producers I can, like, reach out to and work with. Um, I'm not very, very well connected with other artists just because, like, at the moment I'm just doing my own thing and doing lots of improvised music, so I just need more musicians. Mm. I'm not really, like, looking for other artists. Um, But there definitely are, like, Wildflower... um, there, there are definitely Wild people. Flower. No, 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 no. There are definitely people. I'm so out of the out of the loop. Like, yeah, in any right. I, like, guys, I live under a rock. I don't even touch my <laughs> like. I'm on Instagram. I post something. And I'm like, okay, bye. Like, I mm, I yeah. get off that shit. I don't I don't know anything. It's tough the Instagram thing when you're trying to like grow your profile and your brand, and you have to be on there. Yeah, and you just want to throw that I'm, phone I'm dreading into it the, the ocean. Yeah, I think especially I, I, now. Hamish goes through, uh, so Hamish does our social media, right? Mm-hmm. And he goes through stages where it's it's active a lot, mm-hmm. and then it won't be for a few days. And I think he's having a break now. He needs he needs mm. to get out of the matrix for a few days. I can always yeah. like see that, and I go, I just leave him to that. Because we when when we make all the like the artwork and stuff, and and Stop like it. and and all the videos and all that kind of stuff, and we post them on, you know. Um, TikTok, Instagram, mm. Facebook, Twitter. We well, you've just got to get your head, and even on YouTube, you, then you you you're in amongst all these different platforms, trying to get your head around each and every algorithm and the and the adjustments that they've each each platform has made. Mm. And then like it's hard work, yes, yeah. It, that's snapped. what I'm trying to say. It's, it's hard shattered. work. He's shattered. It, it like, I, and now I just when I have to go into the into the matrix, I'm just like, you know, yeah. here we go. I know, I know. Um, I try not to think about it too much, to be honest. Like, I really think try about to just it. Let's get let's the uh, let me let me there. project yeah. onto you. Yeah, let, let that let's get yeah. that over there. <laughs> think about it. Let it worry you. Yeah, I, mm. I I I I don't like it. Even even messages now. I think I I reply to a message in my mind, and then I go, oh no, I haven't actually done that. Yeah, but you don't answer phone calls either. I know. I. I are you a ringer or a, or a, like a messenger? <laughs> if, if, if my I'm mom calls, like, I'm if I'm trying to like go on a date with a guy, I just prefer to like 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 hello, like let's just do it, like yeah. okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, I'll text my girlfriends. I'll text like people. I, I don't mind. I, I'm I'm a bit of both, but I'm very straightforward. So like, yeah. I don't like the whole fuck around. Like I just too, don't yeah. like being around the bush. Let's just like get to it because mm. it is like that. It's like so much like all these messages. Like I don't have time for small talk. Like we just got to get through it. The information. And then exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. information. Yeah. Let's keep moving. Let's keep going. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Half off. I'd say. I'm definitely a ringer. You are a ringer. I'm a ringer. Hey, I, which I, goes. I respect I've had a it. thought. I'll call I, you. I, I, if he calls me twice, I'll try and answer. I love it. When people call me on the phone, I get so excited. I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> You're so old school. I'm like, hi. <laughs> yeah, on your flip phone. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, shout out to Dusty, who's my uh, producer, who I have a project coming out also. Um, and it's with You Dusty. can speak about that. Yeah. All about it. Well, there I am. I just spoke about it. Uh, <laughs> Say more. Say more about it. You can speak about it. Yeah. When's it, when's it coming out? <sighs> I, that's, I don't know. It's just. Oh, it's, it's just, it's, it's waiting. Is it, fi- it's how far finished is it? It's just getting like mixed and mastered at the moment. All right. So, so you're at the end, yeah, end stages. Yeah. Oh, right. I don't have an actual date right now because yeah. you got to put it through the thing. Oh, and then it does the thing. You 
now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I went over to New York, Dusty, because he's originally from Australia. I didn't even meet him in Australia. I met him for the first time in person in New York. Mm. Um, and over there, I think it's just like cheaper or like, like, cause like the phone bill or something. I don't, I don't know how American phones work. I don't know. Um, but he had like a full on flip phone and it was like, go, 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 go shut. Mm. It's your birthday. And he was like, hello. He like unflips it. And it's like, Hey, he was like living in 1995. He's chilling. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then like, he's like, he has like, like his iPhone. He's like iPhone or an iPod without a SIM card. And that's like where he does like all of his Instagram shit. And then he has like the phone for the calls. And it takes him like 20 minutes to write out a text. Cause oh, because like, it's on the buttons? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a. Oh, no. Then you've got to go back. I can't do that. Yeah. That, 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 that was the worst. That. I would have to, if I was getting, I think about that all the time. Like if I could get rid of my phone, I like, I would. And but I'd have to get a BlackBerry just so I could like. <gasps> I know. I love bring, BlackBerry. Bring back the BlackBerry. That would help me so much. Like I'm always like writing emails on my phone and doing things. Like I need a BlackBerry. I couldn't yeah. help. Like not, I need one. Not feel like was it run the run's house run the MC like that show he had about his family, and in the end of every episode, you if you can put this image in, it'd be him like in the bathtub on his BlackBerry writing like a sermon and it would be like families what's important rev run and that's how the episodes <laughs> would end and when i got a blackberry i used to just like think i i was not him sat in the bathtub but i was always there with the black it was it was a cool phone the blackberry mm. when that started mm. coming out i remember this it one. took over yeah my my first phone was one of the ones where like it flipped up mm. and oh, then you yeah. had the keypad yeah, yeah. And I brought that to dance once, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, can I look at your phone?" And I was like, "Yeah." Was it was that the BlackBerry? It wasn't a BlackBerry. I forgot the brand. It wasn't like a they generic like Motorola. brand. Mm. Oh, the Motorola. I don't Pebble. know. It was red or and phone. black. It was like yeah. the sickest thing I owned, and I had um, replay downloaded the song replay. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah that was like the <laughs> one song I had. Back. Yeah. It was funny when you like. I, I used to have like three songs on my phone. And it, one was Hey There, Delilah. Yeah. And I used to listen to it every morning, but it was because I couldn't get any of the music on my phone. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. like Bluetoothing songs at like. Oh, yeah. Lunch? No. You never blue got Bluetooth songs? What's that? Like, where like somebody would go download a bunch of songs and then they'd be like, put on their Bluetooth and send them to you. Put it'd on be, their Bluetooth? It'd be like Airdrop. Yeah, it's like essentially oh. it was Airdrop before Airdrop. Oh, yeah. no, I've never done that. How and you then you'd have, to, you'd have to sit. With your phones next to each other. Yeah. And it would be like s sending a song oh, over. That's yeah. lit. How old are yeah. you? I'm 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could, I, you just you missed just that. Missed yeah, that yeah. <laughs> just yeah, missed right. that. I'm 23. Yeah, I was And you're, you're old. Old. It's old. Old. I'm not that old. I feel old. Yesterday I seen an 18 year old band, right? Mm -hmm. They were playing Sun Driver. Really good band. And, um, I was watching them and I was like, I'm 26. But I was looking at them and I was thinking, I'm so much older than oh these Oh my people. God. What is it with you 26 year olds? Like, oh my God. Because they can see I'm 30. So old. I can see 30 though. Oh my God. We all can. Eight, you are eight. so far away <laughs> from 30. You've got a decade. An entire decade. What I, mean, I would I'm give to, to be 20. I'm trying to live. Like, I can. Hopefully, if I get to 30, I can. Hopefully, if you get to 30. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to die now. <laughs> Hope one of these days I'm going to get to 30. Yeah. Well, oh. I don't know. Age is just one of those yeah. things. It's just like. It's uh, it's so, uh, honestly. It's a construct. I think you were right when you said, what is it with you 26 year olds? Because I think you do. At 25, I never used to think about it. Yeah, no. But now I'm like. Like, oh my God. Yeah, what's going on in my career? Yeah. You know what I mean? Shit yeah. just starts. I don't know yeah. what it is. My back's getting sore. You gotta heal your inner child. Yeah. Maybe that's oh, what no, it is. Oh no, that can't be healed. No, no, that no. That can't be healed. It can be. It can be. <laughs> don't, I don't know. No, it, that <laughs> shit needs to stay in a box. Maybe we need some Crayola. Yeah. Maybe we Look need to that. bring that witch from your house, that pinata. Yeah, she can fix it up. We can have... Like a satanic ritual right now. No, we're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, not around Christmas anyway. I think, <laughs> like for Jesus. you, any, 
you, do you know what's scary? Next year, you're the like. Don't say the you're the age club. of you're the age Morrison. Of Morrison yeah. over there. And what have I achieved? What what look where he achieved at 27. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at that man. He has a pet dog. <laughs> look at him there. You know what I mean? He looks great. He looks fantastic. He's probably thinking the same thing, like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah, but that's a photo life? when he was 23. Because he, 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 he didn't go out like that. Oh, no. <laughs> he, he looked more like me now. <laughs> oh, Jimbo. But yeah, the 27 club. I remember thinking when I was like 19. Oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll probably be Mick Jagger by the time I'm like 23. This is happening. It's probably a headline glass to me somewhere in there. <laughs> somewhere. And then, yeah, like 27. Yeah. I'll take the 27 club, yeah. For the sake of the band. <laughs> And now I think you <laughs> stupid bastard. The for the sake of the band. <laughs> Guys, if I have to. <laughs> you ever hear that story about the guy who killed himself and he did it to get in 27 Club and it was the day John Lennon got shot. So the newspapers never really reported it because John Lennon had got shot. Oh. So it never worked. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> That's very sad. It's awful. <laughs> Just awful. <sighs> Just awful. Way to bring down the fucking vibe. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I was all when you said you need to heal your inner child, that fucking set me off there. Yeah. <sighs> Jack. Things are going to get better. We can, we can talk after. You've got to remember that this I'm, is yes, me. I'm, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I think I'm going to cry. <gasps> Hamish, can you hold me? After. Hold me. <laughs> after. That's cool. Going over to New York to record. Yeah, yeah. So, me How and did Dust. That happen? Um. How did it happen? I went on a plane. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, so I think it was sometime last year, like the start of the lo- <laughs> start of last year. Mm. Um, I connected. Well, my friend, shout out Gabriel Haslam. Um, he was like, "Oh, like the I know this guy. He used to go to my school, and now he's in America. Um, and he has like this. He had a Twitch. Uh, shout out somewhere camp." Mm. I think that's what they're called. Sorry, guys. Um, shout out Dylan as well. Um, and they were doing like Twitches where they would like make beats and stuff because they do lots of like sampling on like the SP, etc. You know, the Roland thing I was. Yep. Um, and I was like, hey, like if you ever want to like use my vocals and like chop them up or like sample my shit, like I can send you stuff. And he was like, I have a bunch of beats and I think you're fucking incredible. And in- uh, say that. Um, you're the best ever. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh my God, like you want to. Um, and he sent me some beats and then I wrote like, what song did I write first? Um, maybe it was, oh, actually I think I sent him a song and he was like, this is really fucking cool. Then he sent me some beats. I think I wrote like two of them here and I recorded it in my bedroom. Um, And then the rest of them, we waited. And then so the start of this year, I went by myself to New York for two weeks, stayed in Brooklyn with the boys. Um, And we basically recorded and were cooking up beats in the kitchen. That's sick. Because like the, the fucking apartments in Brooklyn are like, where about literally the size of this room. Where about in Brooklyn was you? Uh, Bushwick. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I Williamsburg in Brooklyn. I remember being there and just like, this is the place. If yeah. there is a place in the world yeah. that is for me, it's there. A hundred percent. I think some some people said that um like like you either really like New York or you just don't because mm. it's a bit intense. But I really, really enjoyed it and I also was lucky to have like a really awesome like New York fam who, you know, we still keep in touch and stuff like that. Did you play any shows when you were there? Yeah, we did. We played um, at the Sampler. We did like, so uh, that was like the first time we ever performed my original, like like the set that in I have in now. New York, in New York. In New York. In New York with all these incredible, incredible musicians. And um, it was super fun. It was so cold. Um, so, so cold. It was like minus 10 degrees. We, we did this thing where we recorded, um, they were, they were like on the beat pad and live bass and it was literally minus 10 degrees and we were on top of this building and you could see like the whole, the whole thing. You could see like all of New York and all, it was dark. It was the most beautiful thing, but it was freezing. And I remember we were like, it was torture, but we got these videos, like we got these videos and it was so fun. 
Um, but yeah, like we recorded most of the uh, the project like just in the kitchen. So did you go over to New York the first time to re- to to do music or did it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I went over there like just because like it's so different when you're in the same room. And me and Darcy, like we really get each other. Like we have like a really good um energy and we really know exactly what we're trying to get out of the song mm. and he does his thing and i do mine thing and we just complement each other really well so it was really easy like it was really easy for us to just be in the same room and we like just busted out all so of these how songs did you meet? um so yeah i just like hit him up on, on like on instagram and stuff and then we like started this project um and then he was like yeah like come over here we'll do some stuff and we did some stuff and um he'll actually be back like really really soon what's what's the date we back in like nine days and we have like a full week of performances yeah um from the 21st to christmas eve so so you met this is a plug i was just saying we should try and get him in here so you well. were you were talking yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah he won't be here for that long though like he is here for that week yeah. and then that is it so it depends but yeah. No, we'll, we'll fess him in. So yeah. you Kick just met on Instagram oh, and like we're like, yep, let's do it and flew over there. Um, well, we we I met him on Instagram. Then we had like some songs. We I like emailed him back my vocals. We did that for like two songs. There and yeah. they're two of my most favorite songs. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then yeah, and then I flew back over and then I met met everybody. We made songs. Yeah, I'm just one of those people where it's like if something is calling me, I will go and I will yeah. just. Do it. Would you would you think about like living over there, living in the states and doing it in the states? Um, maybe. I mean, like if I have a reason to need to live there, and it's mm. like I'm not gonna just live there f- and like for the sake of living there, and because yeah. it's New York, and it's like if you want to be a musician, you have to live in New York. Like I will, I will go there, you know, if I need to be there. Um, but I will, I'll go back and forth for sure. Like mm. now, I now I actually do have like you know, a network there and people yeah. I can work with and stuff I can do. Um, so I will definitely be back. At least you've got the advantages as well of when your music's being released, It's it's got a platform yeah. in the States. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you, you're lucky for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I am really lucky. Um, it's good. That's It's one thing that I found that has also helped me in my career is just meeting all these amazing people. Mm. Like in all these, di- actually one of my first SoundCloud songs that was like really cool and like, you know, more so like more professional for me um, was with this producer who's from France. And I don't even think he's a producer anymore. I think now he's a model. I can find, maybe you could find it uh, of the song. I don't even I don't even remember, but the cover is like um, Google, digital. Google French French producer turned No, model. no, no. <laughs> it's like a purple cover with like me and this producer, and we're like digitally animated. And yeah, and yeah, I used to work with um a bunch of producers uh, who now have like credits on like Doja Cat, oh, uh, um, yeah. Kid Leroy and stuff. Actually, that's how I properly got into music so i had all this stuff on soundcloud and then my friend han shout out han ramon um who's now like made it he's absolutely he's out he has made it yeah um he like i was like one of the only like girls he knew that actually was like singing and making music you know on soundcloud and Mm. stuff he dropped out of school to become a producer which obviously served him very well um and we made a song and we would like make songs sometimes and he would sample my my vocals and this one time, it's like, oh, this like, this kid. His name is the kid Leroy. He just won this Triple J thing. He wants to like take our song. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like we were kind of just like, yeah, this sounds pretty cool. Like whatever. Um. So we took out our verses, and there's a song that I have, um, called "What You Need" on SoundCloud, um, with the kid Leroy. And I guess just because my name, it's like, the kid Leroy, Yasmin Sadiqi Han. I guess just because my name's in it, and like all these people have seen it. That's when producers started like hitting me up and being like, "Oh, hey, like, do you wanna, do you wanna, you know, make songs with me and stuff?" So I met like Sid Malik, shout out Sid Malik, uh, Debesh. Um, That's and then, so sick. Yeah, <laughs> and I love the Kid Leroy. Yeah, the Kid Leroy's got it going on. Yeah, he's yeah. he's him and his McDonald's he and stuff. So oh, he's he's, he's got blown it. up. Mm-hmm. He's 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 blown up. He's <laughs> blown up. Man. He's just exploded. Yeah, he is exploded. Um, yeah. So I I think 
just because of that, I started meeting all these people and I met, you know, all the producers and um, like rappers from like this area, mm. Canary Manxtown. Um, and that's how I actually really started meeting people. And it wasn't until COVID. So very sad. COVID was really upsetting for a lot of people. Um, but for me, it was really like when I got into my shit. Yep. Just by chance, like my friend um, Mukhtaru, he was like, oh, I'm going to the studio. And I was like, oh, can I come? And he was like, yeah. like you, And like I went there. I drove him there. And like he's he's such a character. He was just like making music just for fun. And I like kind of got in the studio and I was like, oh, yeah, like I'll do some backing vocals. Um, and a producer, AY, he was like, oh, like you should – like you should come here as often as you can. We'll like do a project. We'll like make some songs. Um, so I was working a lot with uh, Ay Sid Malik, Finn Boss Stewart, who I work with a lot now today. Shout out Finn. Um, and that was such a different time for me. Like if you listen to those demos, which are not posted, um, it's so different. It's more like uh, like trap R and B kind of stuff. Mm. But it really taught me how to that really taught me how to like properly write music and how to get into the pocket. And, um, you know, that's when I really kind of evolved. Like that year of COVID is when I started making all this music and meeting all these people. So then when COVID was over, like I already had like this network and yeah. I just fell into all these. You were ready to go. Exactly. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I really owe it to those boys as well because that was, that was really helpful for me. And I think if I didn't have that opportunity – um, I, I mean, I, I do believe that, you know, I still would have found my way, but, you know, it would have happened differently, I think. Yeah, I think, like, as bad as, ba as <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> COVID, woo, as bad as COVID yeah. was for, for artists mm. to actually have time to sit and look at the craft. Yeah. It was, it was very helpful yeah hibernation I'm so, I'm so sorry i've just said that i'm sorry i i honestly you know, yeah. had the best time in COVID. i yeah. can't even lie. <laughs> I, I this is a product out of COVID. really sorry this about your grandma we wrote some songs <laughs> you know you make well, you beautiful gotta make things the, yeah, out of horrible situations exactly and you've got to take like you know the 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 situation and and spin it somehow. Yeah. Right? yeah. Otherwise, well, you're just going to be miserable during that two year period. Yeah. Like I think I think that's what everybody should aspire to to do. Because otherwise, you just sit mm. at home going, man, the world the world shit. But you can't change it. So yeah. Yeah. You can only change what's in your what's in your backyard. Exactly. And I think that's yeah. that was the time to like experiment. Were you saying you didn't yeah. like all the trap R and B? That's the time yeah. to do it because we didn't ever know. <laughs> When it was going to be normal again, if it was going to be normal again. Yeah. So you just get to like delve into you and write whatever you want to write. Can, yeah. I mean? can I ask, can you see yourself moving to the States in the future? Like to, if to, to live and pursue like music properly? I want to be, I think I want to be like very secure mm. um, first before I go moving over overseas and stuff. Like... But like I, I like I, I never say no to stuff like that. Like yeah. I wouldn't say no, and I definitely don't, you know, write it off. But I just want to make sure, like I'm not, yeah. you know, gonna be one of those waitresses. Like oh, I'm just trying to be a musician. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I want to be quite <laughs> secure before I, you know, yeah. take any really big leaps. But that's why that's why I'm always constantly working. Like I'm always trying to prepare for something like that. Um, constantly trying to prepare myself and, you know, work on my craft and do gigs and get experience and things like that. Yeah. And yeah. also, do you prefer to make music off off beats or would you rather do it with like a band? Uh, it's so different for me because for me, it's like 50-50. Actually, at the moment, it's more when I do gigs, it's mostly improvised gigs because yeah. Yeah, it's well, when, easier Yeah, well, when you're doing that stuff and you, you're playing rounds and well, that's improvising. The thing. It's, and that's, yeah. that's when we make songs. Like, yeah. like I have this uh, this thing that I do. It's at a place called Thika. It's in Darlinghurst. Mm. Um, not for this for the rest of this year, but next year, come through. And it's so <laughs> lovely because it's like 5.30, 6 p.m. to like 8.30 and we're just singing. And it's like usually like we get drums and keys or keys and a bass and we're just improvising and we make this like, we, we make like the cream, you know? We mm. are making so much 
like amazing music and people are just walking by with their dogs yeah. eating their dinner some people really like it like sometimes like people will just like come and they sit oh. and it's really beautiful and other times people don't care but it's also really beautiful for us because we're just singing and like it's kind of all kind of i feel like for me audiences like like sometimes like there is like that yeah. connection but most of the time we're so like in it that it's not it, you know, we don't really notice. I think what's I know on. this restaurant. Is this a little? Is it very? It's very, very small. small yeah, yeah, and it's kind of open onto the street. Yes, exactly. Yes, so I saw somebody playing violin in there the other day, and I was like, "What is going on? Yeah, this is yeah, wild." Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to go there? That sounds cool as yeah. fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's and it's and like most of the time, like I'll just like put on my voice memos. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, some of my favorite songs are my voice memos. Yeah. And you know, it's just like improvised pieces that we've done. Yeah. Um. So. It, it it depends, but like beats are cool because it's easier for me to like stack vocals and get yeah. really finicky with like the way that I write my songs because I'm really into like that like 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 the poetry and lyricism of writing music like the way that like not even the words themselves but the way you say and speak the words tell a whole other so story. Who, who are you taking inspiration from now, or and and also um, as as when you started as well? I guess like when I started, it was. V- I've always, I mean, I've always loved like Amy Winehouse, Erica Badu, I can hear, SZA, I can hear Summer Amy. Walker. I can hear a lot of Amy. Yeah, like I, but I take inspiration from everywhere. World yeah. music, anything that really sparks interest, I will take um, inspiration from. And I guess lyrically, I would say like Shakespeare and poetry and like stories. Like I, I feel like I'm I am I love that. I love that. Yeah. I love that. We, when, we, when we've asked that question, and I love how you asked that question there, I know you shouldn't give kudos for production things that go on here, but that was a that was an interviewer masterclass right there by Hamish. <laughs> love that, but Shakespeare, that's the cream of the crop. That's that's yeah. that's the best answer I'll we'll ever get. Oh, the thank best. You guys. What is it? Do sonnets. We get to pre- press the go thing. on. You can have clap. You can press it if you want. That one. Oh, no. go on, that one. <laughs> Shakespeare that is awesome is Shakespeare yeah. one person or multiple people I think maybe he's he could be a woman I don't know who one woman or or or, or a group look it's up for debate uh, I think Shakespeare is uh, he's still alive I don't know maybe it's like a team I don't know maybe yeah. it's a like team Banksy he was the OG Banksy yeah there's like 12 I, of them I don't know who Shakespeare is but you know, I, I, yeah, I like Shakespeare because I think like he he really glorifies depression. Like I, I can't explain it. Like he really makes like these that's really disturbing the and like toxic <laughs> traits seem very beautiful. And mm. that's like something I sing about a lot. Um, like I often sing about, you know, indulging in the things that are not good or indulging in things that I know are bad. But there's like a beauty in that, and it's there's like a beauty in knowing it's bad. But like it's it's I think I think things that are not good, you know, there's they have like this seductiveness to it. They yeah. have like a sexiness, yeah. and and they're very alluring. And I like to talk about that. I like to make it pretty because for me, like it is, it can be pretty sometimes. These these disturbing experiences I have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's just finding beauty in all these different places and things like that. I like that. So, is there? Are you like? This is gonna. This is a weird question, and you probably get it a lot, right? Because if you write songs, people probably read back your lyrics and be and come to you and be like, "Are you okay?" Like, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I I have in the past one girl was like that song, like um my my most recent song, yeah. can't get through. It's like, are you okay? Like, who's broken your heart? And I'm like, oh, Who? don't worry. Who hurt you? But the, but the question don't within worry. that is, is like, are you, are you, um, are you writing like biographically about yourself, or are you, are you kind of seeing things in other people and then relive it like I vicariously through I, their experiences? I, look, for me personally, a lot of the time it is coming from. I feel like for me, I've lived very. I've lived many lives and I've been through lots and I've seen lots of things and I know lots of things just because I don't know, that's just how it happened. Um, and 
but I also I'm I also do know like lots of people and I've met lots of people. I'm just one of those people that I don't know, people like to hang out with. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what it is, but lots of I've just met so many different kinds of people. Um so I think it's a little bit of both. Like uh, like I think mostly it comes from me. I think my music is a little bit selfish, but I do like to draw, you know, oh, I, I, think, I, I think it should be selfish. Yeah. I think it should I, always I think, be selfish. I think, look, yeah, mostly it is coming from me, but I will take, uh, like, sometimes I will take a perspective mm. and look at that. But it's not it's not necessarily, like, from their point of view. It's, like, yeah. how I view it and how I feel yeah. about that. And that's kind of how it changes. And things. that was interesting what you said before about, like, when people, like, who hurt you, who broke your heart kind of thing. From the time of you writing that song to it being released you I, I think that the healing process is already oh done because 100%. you you've you've you've, you've yeah. emotionally had to get that out yeah and it's out there yeah and then by the time it comes out it's that was Long your gone. life six months ago exactly. if you like you know what i mean well that's why that, oh sorry what were you gonna say? i was gonna say i sometimes i think too like People that say that they're writing songs in in, in another person's perspective is because they don't want to admit that maybe that that is that is their that that has been a problem of theirs. Sometimes you know what I mean mm. because I feel like I feel like yeah. I had a friend yeah, by me, my grandma's hear me, house. Hear me out, right? Because <laughs> I think music is is like therapy for a lot of people, yeah. right? And yeah. and I think some people also want to want to kind of create a mask or facade to kind of sit behind a little bit but yeah that's very interesting i don't think it's very i don't think it's selfish at all to write about to write about yourself mm. i think that's really honest and um and thank genuine you. thank you and hard to do i think i think that's a really interesting point because sometimes like i do want to get into like a really dark space and what i've been trying to do well, I guess, especially when I improvise, um, something that I'll think of is like, I want to go to this really dark place, but I often flip it. I make it about learning and I talk about like healing and like going through that to get to the other side. Like sometimes I don't, sometimes I like to explore that, that darkness, but I, but I always try to flip it when I'm improvising, mostly because like, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I feel like I don't want to like manifest the sadness. I like to, I like to share and like help. Like I feel like especially because I'm doing something with words. Mm. It's like, it is healing for lots of people and I want to be able to like help and, and you know, to guide people. Because I feel like one of the things that's so beautiful about all these tragedies that I've had is that I can now use my own like knowledge to help other people. Like I can help people who have suffered loss and all this stuff. Um, so I try to like flip it sometimes, I guess. Um and I and I guess flipping it is just essentially like that mask. I'm not really getting into it, but I'm, you know, just sharing an aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, I, I like I, I think we can't get through. Wait, like, so you're aware it's sad, right? Yeah, yeah. But it things can be sad, but they can have like redemption in them, and they can have light mm -hmm. at the end of the tunnel. So it's yeah. like that is the journey of it. But just like when things are sad. I like that it it comes around, you know what I mean? Mm. So, like, that's why you can listen to, like, Johnny Cash and not be depressed for three and a half minutes. Because by the end of it, you're like, oh, it's all okay again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I can only, me personally, I can only listen to sad music if I'm really happy. Yeah. I love because that about you. And if I listen to, <laughs> like, if I listen to sad music, like, when I'm fucked up, like, it, it only emphasizes, like, you yeah. know, it makes the situation so yeah. much worse. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, and then the, the, and you're not, like, enjoying listening to music now. Now it's just like, you yeah. know. Have you had key, so key moments in your life where you've had a song that just perfectly, like, like, encapsulates what's going on in your life right mm. there? And oh. that, it feels like that song was there for you um. for that moment. Maybe not in, like specific times, but I've definitely like found songs that really do um, articulate how I feel sometimes, especially Summer Walker's really good at that, I think. She always talks about like this, uh, like I don't want to call it a desperation because that makes her sound pathetic and she's awesome, mm. but it is like a certain type. And even Amy Winehouse, I'd say, kind of does this, but it's about choosing to still fight and love the ones who don't really 
care about you anymore or like who have lost interest in you or things like that because like and it's something that I sing about as well in this project and and that's why like like I've like been singing this project before it's even like come out mm. and and at the time it was like I, I feel like it's just gone, th- I've gone through the motions. Like at first it was like, cool, like, this is my music. And then like, and then like it got to this point where I was like, oh wait, like I'm singing about this. Like this is kind of like, you know, this is, it was very much, I was singing about this thing. Cause like this cycle had started again. Um, like this kind of thing I was singing about, like the cycle had started again. And I was like, and every time I'd sing it, I'd be like really singing it and feeling it. Mm-hmm. But now I'm so like, over it that now i sing it and i'm like i sound pathetic i'm singing about like because there's this one song where i'm like it's all about like uh like do you wish what you had before like let's just like revisit this this time that we had together Mm. and now i feel like and there was a time like semi recently where i would sing and i'd be like oh my god you sound like an idiot like like just get over it girl like move on but now I sing it and it's more like I sing it like it's like it's fun to look back on and it's and I was very naive and I didn't know what I wanted and and you know like I kind of bring that into the performance it's more I feel like it's more cheeky and, and it's like come on like don't you wish what you had before blah 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 mm. um, so hopefully I don't get over it <laughs> before like I feel like the, the thing's gonna drop and then <clears throat> I'm gonna be in this whole different stage in my life and it's but I guess that's, that's, that's just what music is. Like, yeah. I can listen to, like, super old demos. Because I don't remember my music. I, it's just coming out of me. Like, I don't know I don't know what's going on. Um, but, like, I'll listen to, like, old demos or old improvised pieces that we do. And hearing it, like, like, I know exactly what I'm talking about. It's so weird. It's like, I know exactly where it came from. Maybe who I'm talking about. Where I was in that time period. It's like, it's like this time capsule. Um, so, I think that's how I'm kind of treating my music at the moment it is though yeah it's it, it, it's a time capsule of your yeah. life like yeah so yeah I suppose, like, no when it's you not it's the time capsule of uh, the masked life is what we're saying <laughs> no <Remember>? like remember <laughs> but but then, even then you're the you're the person behind the mask yeah the, and in so, front of it yeah you're the masked singer that's who you are <laughs> but when you like so you're you're just reliving those moments yeah yeah um, well, I, I think it's beautiful. Like, yeah. it, it, it is a beautiful it, thing. It, it's genuinely beautiful, and I think like there'll be people watching this who are artists, and there'll be people watching this who I've stumbled across it or or whatever. But there'll be there'll be people who don't understand it mm. because they don't do it or they can't do it, and they haven't yeah. found their medium to express themselves in. Yeah. So I think the way. The way we've just like articulated that is, it, it sums it up. You can know I, what I mean? Yeah. Can I kind of turn what you're saying and and just uh, ask the question back? Like, are you able to find like comfort in your own like vulnerability? Yeah, I think so. I think I think I'm one of those people where I often just have a lot going on. Like, there's never a dull moment in my life. Um, and I don't talk about it a lot. Like I don't talk about it to my friends and things. Like I'm always pretty upbeat and stuff. And it's not that I'm like, I'm faking it. It's like when I see my friends, I'm, I'm happy and it's, and I'm like, and I'm getting like good energy off of that. Like I don't feel the need to talk about, I don't know. I don't know. Now yeah. I'm projecting. Um, but, um, We're projecting on us. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I, there's so much power in, in my words. And like when I get to sit down with myself and it is a very healing and vulnerable vulnerable process, I suppose, because I am really now, like, taking a look at everything and really processing those feelings um, and writing narratives from these experiences, I suppose. And, yeah, I, I like, that's what, that's what I love so much about it. That's what makes me feel so powerful and confident on stage. And I think that's one of the things that, comes like like confidence comes from it's like just owning your story and owning what has happened to you and like that's why I'm not shy about it like nobody can say like oh that's weird or that's I don't agree with that because like oh you're not meant to like it's it's didn't happen to you and like people may find you know similarities and and like may be able to, to connect with things that I've gone through but it's 
it's come from like my story and my experience mm. and yeah it is a beautiful thing it's a beautiful it's thing a, it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing now yasmina as we start to wrap up like what's what's happening what's next year looking like well we'll have my project out with dusty and what's it called I don't know yet. You don't know yet. I, that's what that's what's been bugging me because it's you know it's all happened, all these stories and everything's call happened. It, call it. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. No. Where can <laughs> title? Um, I don't know I'll what I'm gonna. Them. I'm not. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet. I'm. I'm still in the process because it's so hard. I don't even know what to name most of my songs yeah. most of the time. It's just like there's so much going on for me. It's hard to like sum it up and and just like call it something because it's, you know, it's more there's too much going on i watched the thing the other day on on crowded house and the, the somebody was in the band was saying um i wish we called um don't dream it's over hey now because nobody like because everybody think thought the song was called hey now when it came out because that's the chorus of the song mm. so nobody could find the song so they didn't sell as many records yeah i've actually i've tried to find that song years ago yeah and that happened to me on because you, you listen to that song and you don't think that if you for the first time that the, the chorus is don't dream it's over us so if you can just name it name name the song yeah. after the chorus because there's a little bit to that so people no. can find it if they like you oh they'll find it they'll find it you'll find it i'll make sure i'll plant it i'll be the, the easter bunny just my cds everywhere <laughs> um but no next year project singles and vibes, lots of live performances always. always yeah. I'm, I'm dying to, I'm dying to come and watch you. Yes, you have to. Yeah. I'd like to see you doing the improv stuff. Yeah, always. And I'd like to come and watch you when you're doing your next full week, show. So. So. Every week, so come through. Send it, please send an invite when you do the uh, restaurant next time, because uh, that I uh, want to oh, yeah, see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, That'll yeah. Be wild. It's so lovely. It's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Like Jack, you've. No. Anyway, for everyone watching, you must go to this restaurant and see this because it is so cool. This, we, they aren't sponsoring this either. We're just saying go there. Yeah, they're definitely not sponsoring. Yeah. <laughs> People will be turning off. Shout there. out Fika. Yeah. Let's Fika. go. Fika. Other restaurants are yeah. available. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, thank you for having really, me. Really, really enjoyed that. It's so hot in here. I think it's we can so hot. <laughs> it's so hot. The pot with Jack Daniels I drank yesterday is coming out. Coming out. Well, yeah, thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you for you sharing, for sharing your stories. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Always. <laughs> I enjoyed thank this. You. Thank you. Oh, and uh, Merry Christmas. <gasps> Merry Christmas, bitches. Bitches, you filthy animals. <laughs>